Hi guys, happy Sunday. Hope you all had a good weekend. And of course, I'm not going to start this without talking about yesterday and how Arsenal became 14 time winners of the FA Cup beating Chelsea. Um, so yeah, it's been a good weekend for me. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I, as much as uh, as possible. I was about to say as much as I have, but uh, understandably for Chelsea fans, it's probably been quite a hard. Uh, weekend. Uh, we'll have a quick look over the the, the charts, uh, and as usual, guys, any any questions that you have, just you know, fire away, and, and uh, I'll be more than happy to to go through those as and when. I mean, looking at uh, just the the Euro here from from last couple of weeks, insane move. However, you know that certainly looking at that candle, how we finished Friday. Uh, pretty pretty key, you would say. Um, I'd almost be half tempted to look for a short uh, little correction move uh, in the euro. Let's just make this chart even smaller. And here we're going back to, you know, I, for whatever reason, you know, I haven't marked up that 24th of September high, uh, really because obviously it's quite far away. But you can see it hit that, and rejected it, uh, and we have come lower. So you can see now the way people, I think, will be looking at uh, things going into the new week, new month as well, is we've rejected one level, two levels, three levels, and also the high of the 27th of July, all taken off in one day. So pretty key there from uh, the bears, uh, anyway, of, of this, this currency pair, maybe. We're actually gonna start to see a bit of a drift lower. Um, now, how would I go about that? I think obviously you're now looking to sort of just manoeuvre some of these these lines to sort of get right on certain levels. And I'll be going about it doing this way. I mean, I'm just going to remove the ones down below because it's unlikely, of course, that we're going to get a massive move down there. And if, if it did, obviously, just be aware of the highs from the, the 9th of March that we had, which would obviously be an area that people would, would be looking to, to get in again. So massive move lower, then just be aware of, of these two points here. Uh, however, obviously unlikely to, to get there. Um, so the two ways I'd, I'd almost be looking at uh, this this pair is you've got the, the, the opportunity to get long. And I would say if it gets back above this 118 handle on a daily close, that's, that's sort of saying, okay, the bears won Friday, but now they've given up a bit and actually maybe we start to push on to that yearly high again. However, if we do stay below this 118, uh, I wouldn't be too surprised to see us then come down to the 117 handle. And then obviously what happens at that point is, well, another decision has to be made. Do the, the buyer step in or do we dip, drip, drip back down towards the, the 23rd of July high? And if that goes, well, this is when this area comes in a bit quicker and uh, yeah that that would be quite exciting however I think from the line in the sand the 118 handle is is going to be is going to be pretty useful to, to keep an eye on the only thing you would say is obviously we've got non fun payrolls on Friday and now the, the sort of the earnings are done and, and whatnot it might be that especially after a big move like you've seen here we just drift sideways for a bit. So maybe not expecting fireworks just yet. You can see these moves are pretty similar. Maybe we just have to range a touch. I think we do push lower. I think on the week we're gonna finish lower. Um, but that said, a daily close above 118 uh, on the futures, then I would uh, be looking to sort of, I guess, you know, redo my analysis and say, okay, you're wrong for now. And actually it looks like we could get another test of that high. So that's how I see the Euro. Just before we go on to the pound, I think it's worth having a look at the, the weekly chart here uh, as well. Actually, I'm gonna put that on a daily just to leave those levels for the next week. And we'll go to, we'll go to the Euro on the weekly, but just remove everything. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, so you can see on the weekly, of course, yeah, up to levels not seen for, for quite some time. And, and, and you know, sometimes you, you look, look back at these in in uh, in a few weeks, months' time, and you think, God, was that the opportunity to get short this market? I think people will be thinking that. Uh, so we'll have to we'll have to hold out and, and see how that goes. If we're having a look at 
the uh, the chart since the beginning of time. Let's have a look to see if we can get any rough trend lines on. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, that is that could be. We could have seen the high for a while. Is is how you need to get the focus. But also on the flip side, you can see how important that's going to be. You can really see. You know, if we were to get a close uh, up and above that trend line multi-decade trend line uh, what's to stop it going towards that 122 area you know these lows that we've got you know from uh, uh, February 18 big big level to, to keep an eye on so just bear that in mind going forward for the next couple of weeks uh, the pound you can see pushed on again it came down a bit on on uh, on Friday but it had gone one two three four five six seven eight nine nine days to the upside one two three four five six seven eight nine ten days to the upside 132 will be an area of focus uh, a good enough test of it you have to say it's only 20 ticks away from from sort of retesting that high that we had on the 6th of March uh, which would be basically a reverse of the coronavirus move that we saw where pound just dropped uh, off the cliff so how to go about this into the the new week uh, levels to the downside of course can still stay on this boxed area I'm just going to circle it, uh, circle it shade it in now that for me is, is key keep a watch on that because if we do drift below the 130 that's when I think you're going to see this market come under a bit more pressure what could be the, the cue for that could be some serious dollar strength in the euro and we drift lower and then the pound does as, as well pullbacks would be welcome for sure uh, and this is another market where I'm just going to put it onto the weekly uh, chart and again remove everything for you all uh, and then you're gonna have people looking at the the trend line here so going back from the 2018 high I mean look at that it, it, it's it's beyond perfect and does it break I, I from a risk reward point of view I think you've got two very good opportunities here to go short on the euro and the pound i expect uh weak red red candles i expect on the week doing this next sunday uh it, it's going to be you know we're going to have a, a few a few days uh, into the downside and you can just see the importance of this that said we close a week above this and next thing you know it's 135 next thing you know it's what it's 137 50, 60, uh, and for the euro, you know, we've already gone through those levels. So, yeah, if you like your, your longer time frames, and um, you can just see the importance of, of those in, in, in play there. So do, 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 do keep a watch on how we react around those previous highs if we even get back to test test them. Aussie dollar, uh, we had a level marked up, seventy two fifteen. Why did we have it marked up? Yeah, this, this resistance here from February uh, and April last year, it's important. Uh, you can just see that those lows. I mean, just the way I'd, I'd be looking at these these markets, these dollar pairs, is we're just coming to such key, key resistance. And, you know, everyone's now talking about the dollar is dead. It's when everyone thinks that, and all the headlines are saying it, that you start to get people taking a bit of profit, and then we reverse, and then suddenly you get some good news out of the US, or some bad news out of Europe, or Australia, or the UK, and things turn around and they come down quite quick. I'm, I'm bullish the US dollar this week, is what I'm saying. I will be wrong, in my opinion, if we get back above 72.15, and you can see there's a nice little uh well not little a nice push you could get towards that next target where would that sort of line in the sand be where you know the buyers have to defend for me it, it's this, this 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 zone here obviously on the 21st of uh july so two months ago we really pushed higher be interesting to see what happens if we come back to test all of that uh you'd argue similar to the euro if we quick, quickly go back to the euro that circled area in the euro is a point where the bulls will fancy going long. Here, for the Aussie, let's make it a circle as well. It's gonna be this point here. And as long as that holds, you know, this is 
pullback would be fine and just give up people opportunity to get in again. I think we get a test of that. I think we get a test of the euro one and for the pound, let's just make a circle here for the similar sort of uh, range. You know, I think we get a test of those in the coming weeks, if not, if not next week. That said, now what makes me slightly less confident on that is that I'm still, I'm still quite bullish US equities. And for them to go higher, the correlation we're seeing at the moment is the dollar is becoming weaker, that your currency such as the pound and the Aussie are going higher. So it's something just to, to think about uh, for, for the S&P and that correlation with equities of course, and, and currencies. Of course, trade what you see, not what you think. And if, I mean, if the S&P was to get back below this area of support, then, then that's wrong, you know, and uh, regardless of what currencies are doing. But on the flip side, if we get above this rectangled area, really sort of 3300 handle, which was the, the low that we had back on the 10th of Feb, you might start to see the currencies actually find a bit of support when we push on. But I wouldn't change anything looking at this um, for, the, for the equity markets. It's decision time has to be made above or below this little range that we're in. And I would fancy longs from all of these points below or these two points below. If we come 31.89 again, a close of the day below that. And also our moving average here, which is the 21 period then I think we, we would get these these levels to come in and then it's another decision time. A close of the day above the high that we had on the 23rd of July and the low of the 10th of Feb is key. Having a look at this on the weekly chart, uh, you can see how important it was where we closed. You can see here, if we just take away that last week, and obviously this is the month, you get strong resist air support, turns to resistance and you get one rejection, two rejection, close above. It's the first close above. It's the highest, actually, I believe. Let's put the month on. It's the highest the S&P has ever closed a month. Silence says it all. So yeah, going back to the S&P here on the uh, the daily. Decision time, decision time here or below. So let's, let's hold out, see how it goes. The NASDAQ, um, I'm not, not going to change anything on this either, really, other than, you know, just that double top and the all-time high. The trend channel's intact. In the 21-day moving average, leave it on because it has been respected enough, but it's starting to get a bit messy. And uh, let me just remove these couple of rectangles on here. I've, I mean, looking at this, you know, it's... Um, once we close below this area, you can see we push down and then it's this previous all-time high in the trend channel and that was a really good opportunity back on the 24th uh, of July which I believe was yeah, Friday before we started the, the next week that rejection led us to push higher we now closed above this area so that's your line in the sand for me I, I would imagine we get a, an all-time high test again in, in the next couple of days and then decision time do we reject it do we push higher let's hold out and see for the Dow Jones, um, let's just remove everything because we couldn't cover it last week. So we'll start afresh. Um, obviously, key key area here. We've got those lows from Jan and Feb. We need to keep a watch on there. Still a, a fair whack away. Certainly looks like there's a decent enough trend line coming from the lows. A couple of failed tests there. Thursday, Friday, that would have been interesting to see if we had closed below there and that the maybe the S&P would have closed its week below. Good, good buying pressure coming in then. You can see also the low from the 14th of, of July. So strong finish on Friday, I would say. Also back above the trend line, I'd expect that we get the, the double top from the 15th and the 23rd of July. I reckon that comes in. Um, where would it be wrong a close of the day below uh, Thursday and Friday's double bottom above there obviously just keep a watch because you're, you're likely to get a, a nice move towards the 9th of, uh, of June good week for, for equities and it's uh, it would be looking very nice because you, you likely had 
you know the S and P. If, you know, if we can close the week above thirty three thirty, then it's all time highs very shortly. The Nasdaq will be on all time highs, and you may well start to get the the Dow getting closer towards this January and February double bottom, which is massive. You'd expect a, a big challenge to get through that. Uh, where the others might find it a bit easier. Well, the Nasdaq certainly did. The S&P, we haven't quite seen it just yet. Gold pushing on. That's a new, uh, new all-time high for for gold, I believe. Yeah, we got that course and um, didn't. You know, let's put it on the 60-minute just to see how it reacted around that point. Yeah, a bit of resistance came down, then found a bit of support. It, it's it's interesting. I was actually, uh, you know, looking. Just on Twitter yesterday, and, and some people were are saying we're we're going to come a bit lower. And you know the the argument for that is dollar strength in in the pairs at massive resistance levels. If the dollar starts strengthening, whether it just be because a bit of profit taking or whatever, gold has got to come lower. And I think you know looking at looking how we finished Friday, you have got. The 28th of July, then we couldn't close above it the 29th, couldn't close above it the 30th. Had a go on Friday, but we couldn't. You know, four days without getting above 1975. I think it's worth a little short. Again, risk reward's quite nice there. It might want to, you know, take 2000 out and then come, come a bit lower. Uh, if you want to be a bit safer, then, you know, you could be looking at sort of 1936 and a short below there and then you just sort of take profit on you know these previous highs that turn to lows 1900 hand obviously looks quite significant uh targets to the upside it depends how you really want to go about this i'd, I'd say it's uh you know if you're still long and, and it's a risk-free trade completely then you, you are slightly happier um just to let it run anyway aren't you you know if it's a longer term trade you know the conditions are still quite nice for gold i would just I'm not gonna, you know, for the for the, the first three currencies we went through, I, I'm happy to put my neck on the line and say we come lower for gold. You know, I think if we could have a little pullback, but it's more like I'd say 55 percent sure uh, after a fantastic run that it's been on. Oil, we said last week, didn't we? You know, if if, uh, if it was a good enough weekend, it wouldn't technically be the worst idea to get long. It just never really really went and uh, we had a, a break of that trend line we had a break of support uh, it just came down to 39 38 39 dollars and i think the the last few closes on the weeks you can see have been pretty much the same so it's just not there at the moment for for oil um i actually had traded to the short side on the the thursday um quite poorly actually you think well it went down all that way yes it did I just came out way too early on that, way too early. However, we've uh, we've rebounded since Thursday's low, and you can just see here, looking at the 60 minute, it uh, never really threatened again that low. Uh, so looking on the day, I mean, looking at this, uh, having looked at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other markets, it's not appealing, is it really, looking at oil? So maybe a bigger move to come, uh, you know, the, the way oil can you know spring to life is is certainly you know worth looking at uh, it just doesn't look like there's much gonna happen until we break out this it's the horrible little range that we've been in you know the trend line breaks have become it you know horrible and yeah oh, I don't know even if we break 38 39 and you've got a lot of support it just hasn't really done anything since 19th of June I'd be interested to know what you guys think about oil. I'm, I'm still, you know, I still think we do go higher overall. Um, but maybe, you know, the dollar strength side of things would, would perhaps postpone that a bit. I'm not in an oil trade. Uh, however, I would like to have another go at a long 43, 43 above there towards, you know, the $50 handle. More importantly, the, the, the 3rd of March high, which is 48.58. But we'll have to hold out and see. Silver, that finish is not good, is it? Look at that. What a finish on the week. I mean, the more just looking at these charts, the more I'm, I'm really developing this dollar strength bias for the week. Yeah, I mean, the, oh, you know, two rejections 
of of the high that you've got from August 13. Look at that. I mean, test, come back. I mean, you know, the way to obviously to then go about this looking on, on the daily chart is, you know, it's, it's gappy, of course, but uh, let's put it on the daily. Yeah, it's a bit cleaner. You, you, you'd say that the bulls are happy as long as it stays above the low that we had on the 23rd uh, and the 28th, what candle that is. And uh, if you want to be safe and not short right away, then underneath 22.45 is, is the place for that. I, I mean, just... From having a look at these charts, I'm going to be really interested to listen to Anthony's briefing tomorrow, but I'm getting a dollar strength vibe, which is annoying because how is that going to impact the equity markets? We'll see. DAX, look at that. Look at that. Break of the trend, break of a massive area of support and a big push lower. Also, this this close below these lows is, is not nice. I know the FTSE had a, a poor week as well. I had a little go. Uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago on the FTSE, just trying to get in. Didn't happen, didn't work, didn't really uh, go for the bite. Um, DAX, it'd be interesting to see if we can come back down to the 12,000 handle, because that's the way it's looking like. On the flip side, you know, how to, to get in along here, you know, if we get this rectangular area, you know, this is now in control of the sellers. So a daily close back above here, you know, is, is something to, you know, to be aware of. And especially if you get risk on you know this zone becomes opportunity for, for buyers to come in however you know i would would uh well you only you would only get in that of course if it closes the day above so i think that's a safe way to go about looking for longs likelihood is twelve thousand comes in just the way we finished the day and the week anyway guys hope you all had uh, uh, a good time watching that uh, and also the enjoyed the the lecture the lecture the the webinar Anthony Piers, Alex and myself did uh, that was uploaded yesterday I'll drop the link below um, but so yeah I hope you will have a, a good week ahead a good month ahead uh, and I'll catch you all next Sunday